is Jack, and we're going to break down Jack of all trades. This is actually the second time I'll be breaking it down, but this will be more, uh, more, sp more precise, uh, more direct, a lot of different things that went on to making the record. A bunch of the quotables in the record that will break down exactly what they mean, and um, hopefully you guys will check it out after this. A schoolboy with flows, yeah, I'm a backpacker. The corner boys with balls, those were the smack rappers. In my city, they smoke ops and smoke after. They grab a glass, they pour a liquor, they toast after. And beast to the count. What makes me, first of all, you came up with the name. <laughs> you came up with the name Jack of All Trades. Uh, because it stems from Jack and the Beats. All hip hop, most hip hop fans, especially older hip hop fans, know Jack and the Beats is when you rap to uh, multiple beats in a row as they trans, they change. Uh, Jack of all trades is a play on my name as Jack, um, but I think it also plays on the fact that I'm um, that my man Feast is playing music in the background, and uh, <laughs> but it's the fact that like I have three degrees, I have a BA, a BA, a BS, and an MSW, a degree in anthropology, a degree in communication, and a master's in social work. Um, so it plays on that. It plays on the fact that I'm an athlete, and it plays on the fact that I do all these things at high level. Like I, I played across seas, uh, I played in Mexico, Canada. Uh, Costa Rica, um, I've had NFL entries, I've had all kinds of things, so in that realm, I'm already touching a lot of different facets. In terms of the Jack of All Trades, because there's multiple beats, a lot of the beats that are on that particular record have different cadences, different uh, sounds, so I have to adjust on the fly. Like, it wasn't a lot of, you were there when I recorded it, I, I rapped for five minutes straight, five minutes, 25 seconds straight, before I had to punch out. Jack of All Trades is just a representation of the fact that I do a lot of different things, and I'm passionate about all of them. Like, it's not like I do, you know, if I'm if I can't do it to the best of my ability, I don't like to do it. It's not a, it's not a not like I can't do things for fun, because I do do things for fun. But if I am doing it and I'm not competitive about it, it's strictly for fun. I'm not gonna turn the switch on, but when it comes to music, when it comes to football, when it comes to uh, creating anything, anything I'm creating, I try to do it to the best that I have. And I think that is what makes me the jack of all trades. And there is a second one that's ready to go. We're just waiting to shoot the video for it, but there is a second one that's ready to go. Um, Jack of all trades, before I even like go into it, it's, a, it's, a, it's literally an eight minute verse. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna point out maybe one or two highlights from each beat that I rapped on. So the first beat was uh, The Problem versus The Hustler. It's a Cassidy song from his album. Um, I think it's an album called The Hustler, I think. If I'm not too, mis I'm not too sure, please don't quit, kill me for that. But um, in, that line, in that verse, there's a couple lines in there. So the first line, I, I start off the song with saying, I'm a schoolboy with flows, yeah, I'm a backpacker. The corner boys with bars, those were the smack rappers. You have to be a battle rap fan to understand what that means. But you also have to be in tune with drugs. Smack is, uh, refers to a drug, but smack also refers to URL, the battle rap league. When I say the corner boys with bars, those were the smack rappers, corner boys are drug dealers. In my city, those were the guys that were rapping, the corner boys. They were selling smack, quote unquote. But also, URL, smack rappers. There are smack rappers that rap in the URL. I played on that when I said that line. Um, for those who don't know the schoolboy, when I say backpackers, typically the guys that rap, that walk around with their backpacks on, literally, and they have a much more positive sound and not really aggressive and those kinds of things. Which, if I'm being honest, isn't completely true to who I am as an artist, but it plays a part in it. Don't push me, I'm on the edge, I might snap. I'm on my toes, I'm leaning forward, that's Mike Jack. It's literally just reflecting on the fact of when Michael Jackson does that toe thing where he's leaning forward almost and he almost falls, it's just reflecting on the fact that I said, I'm on the edge, I might snap. And I felt like describing that is a great way to fill that in right there. The next beat is 50 Cent. So 50 Cent, I whoop your head, I think. And, and that one, I just loved the change of pace that I had to take. I had to slow it down. It was a very smooth transition. So when you guys hear it, you'll notice it's a very smooth transition. My particular favorite sequence in that song is when I, I described the fact that I wore um, Mitch Mack socks or something like that. I forgot how the line even goes. It's a very long song. I forgot how the line even goes. But I think I started by saying, if I stand for it, I'm going to die for it. Put my name inside that verse and I won't ignore it. That's the Philly in me. Time for y'all to see it in me. At 215 Northside brought me up. Now I hold it up. Never ran even when it's tough. I lost then, I won now. That's all growth. I don't do it for your stamp. I do it for the goats. So Styles P and Nickel Nine can say the kid is dope. No designer, just a V-neck cover the six pack. Sweatpants, pair of Nike socks, but they don't match. What I'm pretty much saying there, like in that, that pair of Nike socks, all I'm pretty much saying is that like I'm not a fancy dude. I can care less about dressing the flyers. I don't really, all that stuff is kind of irrelevant to me. The way you wear it makes it. I don't really, all that other stuff, I think it's like, there could be a chick right out there, and if our job is to impress her, you're gonna feel like an asshole when you spent $300 on a Gucci belt, and I put up with a 
two dollar V neck. Like you gonna look, it just doesn't feel right to you. It's like that was dumb. So for me, I could care less about that. I think who you are as the person defines that. Third instrumental is Drake, 5 a.m. in Toronto. Uh, that one, I literally tell a story. I got into a situation up here where a gentleman pulled a gun out on me and my friend. We handled it a certain way, but he pulled out the gun. Um, and I think my favorite line in that one is when I said, um, uh, I said, life is going up and down, had me getting motion sick, living with my pen state. I'm just full of wittiness. Tried to write one line, wasn't really feeling it. Then I wrote another one, so I had to scribble it. But then I thought harder, schemed and I plot. I'm a special kind of Jack that you can't put in the box. Jack in the box, my name's Jack. Jack you know, put me in a box. You can't marginalize me and say this is the kind of artist I am. So I tried to stick true to that. The fourth verse on there was uh, Red Cafe, Hottest in the Hood. That entire sequence was inspired by some individuals who I know who are living up to their potential, who have all the potential in the world to do some great things, but they just kind of refuse to, to kind of push that boundary. They kind of rather stay within comfort and kind of uh, and kind of just rely on their talent. They don't really push themselves, they just kind of stay in that, that little zone. So that, that verse wasn't inspired by no one in particular, more so several people who I know who aren't, who I know aren't learning to their potential. After that, what was it, Make the Stallion? Yeah, make, the Make the Stallion one was, uh, I just had fun with that one. I actually didn't hear the song in its entirety. I think I just heard like a piece of it going by somebody's car. What's it called? Ratchet? Okay, it's Ratchet. Shout out to Make the Stallion. But um, I felt like that beat was a good change of pace. I felt like it was good to include a female instrumental on there. I mean, it, they, they, that, that verse right there was just kind of having fun, getting a little loose with my tone. Um, but yeah, so that was that was a pretty, that, that was the record right there. I kind of just had some fun with. Now, the next one, Vince Staples. That one, Blue Suede, that's the name of the beat. I had a lot. That one was layered. There, I mean, there's two lines in there that are pretty layered. The, the one where I said, uh, in my city, there were sharks that was occupying turf. And I ain't learn to swim, but I taught myself to surf. So I went against the current while I remained current. Like to me, all that was a might be the most significant line in there, where it pretty much described the city I was raised in, the area I was in. And within that area, there were some very aggressive men. They would, they would be the sharks. Although I was a part of the environment, I wasn't a shark. I wasn't swimming, right? So I had to learn how to navigate that. That's where the surf line comes in at. I learned to navigate my way around the sharks. They had a certain way that they was living, so they had their current. So I had to find another current to follow, but at the same time, remaining relevant and respected. And so I knew I wasn't no shark, and I knew I couldn't ride the wave that they was riding. I had to create my own wave and maneuver my way around it. That could be applied to every facet of life. And then the, uh, the other line where I, I talked about uh, hung around the projects, learned how to set rep, the hung around professors, learned to make a coin stretch. Um, I think that's pretty self-explanatory, but, explanatory, but it shows that the two lifestyles, although they are not equivalent, I learned two different things from both of them that were very significant. So I learned loyalty. Growing up in Philly, uh, you learn that you, Look, if you're from 22nd Street, 23rd Street, or this project, or that project, or that project, that's where you're from. You have to be loyal to that. You're loyal to that. Even though you don't own it, we learn loyalty very quickly because of that. However, when I got to school, I started hanging with the professors and learned, meeting the professors, actually getting to know them. One of my mentors, uh, Dr. Garcia, um, I, I got real, I, me and him are really close. I'm around him a lot. I'm around Dwight Horsey a lot. These, those are two of my mentors that I uh, got since I was here. Uh, I, I, was, I was blessed to uh, meet and, and bond with. And I learned different things. I learned how to, how to make money, learned how to save money, learned about uh, how to navigate professional conversations. These are all different things I learned here. And I don't take none of that for granted. And the last one was Young Buck Get Buck. Now in this particular verse, this is the very brash, asshole type of version of me, right? Like I said in the song, um, I don't want your girl homie. She ain't got no common sense. I didn't diss some women wrong and she would be my consequence. Like, I'm just really being an asshole. Like, I'm showing that I can rap. I feel like I'm the best rapper. I even said that I'm the best rapper in the Ville. Like I said, I'm the best rapper here. If you don't like it, come see me about it. Like, I'm very brash, very asshole -ish. It's very hip hop esque in that last verse because it's just like, look, I'm the best rapper here. You can't rap better than me. Your girl ain't that good looking. I don't want her. Like <laughs> that, that would be a misstep for me. Like I'm just like real asshole in this last verse. And I'm not gonna say that's the truest version of me on this record. I think every piece of this record that you hear, they're all representations of me. And they're all representations of where I can go as an artist. And I think they all should be taken uh, equally. And I think that at the end of the day, uh, when you hear it, you get a little bit of me every single piece. You get a small portion of my personality. The opposite, I, I exaggerate on other songs. The best, line in, the best line in that particular section is when I say, you're a shark amongst the orca, now you turn into some food. Right. Now, I just mentioned before that the sharks ran the territories and all that, but if you know anything about wildlife, you know the orcas run the ocean. <laughs> they eat everything. No matter what you are, they eat it. A great white, as ferocious as they are, as bad as their reputation is, the orcas run it. What you learn in this world is that no matter how gangster you are in your block, or how gangster you are in your neighborhood or your city, 
You ain't got nothing on them politicians. You ain't got nothing on them, on them businessmen that run those multi-million dollar corporations. No matter how tough or how big and bad you think you are, that's what that is. You will, you fall and crumble when you live that life and you come into those uh, contact with those orcas. So, and the, the whole thing, the whole point of Jack of All Trades was to show one, I can rap really well, and I can rap for a while too. Um, two. I always try to throw gems in there because these are things I wish I was hearing when I was 12 and 13 years old. If I can, if someone can hear my record and say, you know what, this changed my perspective on something or this challenged my perspective on something, I did my job as an artist because all it is is an art form. Now, I know I, I heart back to Philly a lot, but at the end of the day, when you grow up in a city like Philly, you're taught that you can only be one or two or three things. And by me being the jack of all trades, I showed you you could be five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten things. And that's the purpose of that. That's the purpose of the series. And the next one will be out uh, uh, fairly soon. I don't want you guys to shoot the video for it, but the next one will be out because uh, this Jack of All Trades is probably over, uh, in terms of releases, over six months. So there's another one coming, um, and I got a third one after that already set up to go too. So uh, please, you get a chance, Jack Jackson Jr., Jack of All Trades, it's on YouTube. Please, man, go, go show some love, show some support. I don't care if you throw a comment in it. Whatever you want to do, just show some love to it, man. I really enjoyed it. I was impressed by it when I heard it back. And I had my homies there to support me, so it was a great moment. And the man behind the camera right now was the one that came with for the name. So all praises to, to, to the man above and, and to, to my supporters and everyone that's been there with me since the start. It's the north side. 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 It's the north side.